Brad, a pilot, is introduced as the primary character as the movie begins. He can be observed moving throughout the terminal. He was also having a video call with his daughter while doing this. I'll complete my work and come see you shortly. Hearing this makes her pleased. Brad joins his colleague in the pilot's cabin after that. The two pilots begin introducing themselves. Then someone calls Brad out. He is informed by an officer that there is an emergency. You must bring a murderer. Tony, who is a strong individual, is with him. He agrees that we are handing you his responsibilities because of your sensibility. He introduces himself to the crew, and they talk about the passengers. Whether or not everyone has arrived, once everyone has boarded the aircraft and seated themselves, then these people take off right away. Brad expresses his love for his daughter to his fellow pilot and will shortly meet her. There is no one else besides us. These individuals then continue their flight till dusk, but then the weather starts to quickly deteriorate. Brad becomes concerned as a result because he was not feeling well. He reminds everyone in the car to buckle up. He additionally tries to communicate with his center via the radio. He can't speak to them, though, because the radios in this room gradually stop working, and then an abrupt shock of electricity strikes from the plane. The result is that the aircraft takes off. Brad was becoming concerned, so he went to meet everyone on board. He sighs in satisfaction, since everyone on board was fine. And while I watched, the light was gradually going out. The plane is hit once more in the middle. Brad stumbles as a result, hurting his head. All of the passengers were in poor condition as a result of these circumstances. Brad returns to the lodge. Then he and his friend begin taking care of the aircraft. For them, it was a really trying moment. Due to the radio's malfunction. On top of that, nothing was visible on the screen in front of them. Brad then continues, we have to bring the plane down. Considering that if another shock is given, the aircraft will be obliterated. So they start bringing the plane down right away. Every passenger was terrified. Then a woman unbuckles her seatbelt. When Tony's cop notices her, he follows suit. They struck forcefully from the upper side since the plane was descending, so harshly that they pass away right away. The plane starts descending rapidly all of a sudden. Brad and his partner then swiftly take possession of it. The passengers are in a horrible situation. The air hostess then informs Brad. On this, he requested that everyone be managed and urged everyone to take their seats. Since we will shortly touch down at a local airport, they can see that we are currently crossing an island. If there is no other option, they choose to set down the aircraft on this island. After locating a suitable location, they land the aircraft, despite the fact that they had arrived in a crisis. However, they arrived safely. Brad and his partner are now content. When they discover that the plane still has some electricity, Brad then instructs everyone to sit down. The proprietor of the plane firm observes this as well, that the plane abruptly vanished from view, mostly because he missed the plane landing. Due to the radio's damage, he was unable to communicate for a considerable amount of time. He appears a little uptight because of this. The flight attendant now arrives and informs Brad that Tony's officer has passed away. Brad is upset to hear this, but he instructs him to take care of the remaining passengers regardless of what transpired. Everyone was now speculating as to how we arrived here. Brad steps up and informs them that we had to land here due to an emergency. In the plane, there is still some electricity. This we will use to fix the remaining electricity. You guys can comfortably stay here while we wait. You will receive food, drink, and housing. And don't worry, we'll be leaving right away. The owner of the plane firm encounters a rescue specialist there. Who is responsible for finding these stranded individuals? The manager of the business informs him that I require all the information about my plane, such as where did it go, its employees, and all of the passenger information. Brad now approaches the aircraft and begins to repair it, but he notices that the plane has very little electricity. They will have to wait because of this. Since the radio is likewise inoperable, he then shares this information with his other pilot. After his buddy views the map, she informs him, We are imprisoned on a private island. This is not a free place. 
but a private army has taken control of it, which was unfortunate because they were all thugs in it. And if they hurt us in any way, the government won't be able to protect us. Brad comments that we will need to contact our rescue team here after hearing this in order for them to save us all and come because there is no other way to leave this place. Brad now approaches everyone and informs them that the radio is still not functioning as a result of a malfunction. All the passengers were really anxious after hearing this. Additionally, Brad persuades them that we will go to the opposite side of the island and locate the radio and will request that the rescue crew be sent here by our team, who will arrive and rescue you all. Tony will accompany me as well. After saying this, he releases Tony's shackle and the group advances. We can now see the evil guys that led the private army. Whoever a man approaches and informs that a jet has arrived and made an emergency landing here on the island. Additionally, it contains a sizable number of individuals from other nations. The leader of the private army offers him money after hearing this. He instructs his group to prepare for this knowledge. Because it's possible that these individuals intended to rob them when they left, Brad and Tony are making progress through the island's jungle. Brad is questioned by Tony as to why he released him and where he is being taken. Brad claims that due of you, I am unable to endanger everyone. And this frightening private army is here, who you must deal with because of me. Then he bombards Brad with inquiries. Then all of a sudden, he stops talking. Tony was not present when Brad looked behind him and noticed he had left. The rescue specialist is busily gathering information on the jet there. Brad can be seen in a video. He fights and severely beats the passenger. The rescue specialist was overjoyed to see his fighting prowess now. He then speaks with the CEO of a private corporation, said to be prepared, you folks. At any point, you might be needed, which he concurs. Brad visits a deserted factory in the forest, where he discovers a locked radio device. He fixes it, after which he places the phone. He converses with the helpline, whom he informs of his plane's existence and this island. But the guy in front of him cannot hear him because of a line-related issue. Then he has an insight. She is forced to write all of these things by him, and requests that she inform his office of this. Brad is then attacked by a man who appears. Then he chases him down and severely beats him, and renders him helpless. Brad then senses a presence entering the space. That is why he swiftly hides. However, Tony was the only person present, who had taken the firearms from many gangsters they had murdered. He then starts yelling for Brad, but he also provides him some weapons when Brad steps forward. Following that, they both begin to descend. Then a camera is brought here. They learn from the footage that that threatening private army take the visitors hostage. Then they rob their family of a large sum of money. In return for departing from them, they recognize the threat to our passengers as soon as they see it. They both enter the car now and sit outside and move in the direction of their passengers. When every passenger had seated themselves, then they hear a car's sound. They are delighted that it is Brad after thinking this. Brad was exempt from this risky private army. They were approaching these folks while firing shots. The sound of these rounds was audible to Brad and Tony as well. The commander of the private army requests a list of all the passengers from the pilot. The flight attendant then swiftly produces the list and hands it to him. The brain then queries where your senior pilot Brad is. He mentions that he went to the jungle to do some work on that page but has not yet come back. A woman tries to leave the area in the meantime, but they kill her by shooting her. Brad hears this and rushes to assist her. Tony, however, stops him. The thugs start loading everyone onto the bus because they were holding them as prisoners and bringing them with him. Their commander explains to his two followers to board the aircraft and transport any required valuables. He then departs from here while taking all of the passengers with him. Brad then lashes out at Tony for taking our people while you refuse to let me leave. Tony then goes on to tell him that he was a very large army. They are risky individuals. You wouldn't have been able to take on such a sizable army by yourself if you had stayed. However, despite being heartbroken, these two are moving on and apprehend the two thugs who were stealing expensive items off the aircraft. 
Brad demands to know where they would have gone if they had been traveling with passengers. On which he comments, this factory is empty. They had to have traveled there. The rescue professional now knew. Brad's daughter informed her about the circumstances there. In other words, their plane is stranded on a nearby island. Additionally, an extremely hazardous private army is present. He informs the owner of the aircraft company about this, on which he advises you to dispatch your private squad and rescue team right away. Then, these people locate that island and their aircraft swiftly, based on which they determine that the private team's leader will lead his team there first. While Brad and Tony were driving their automobile toward the factory, they approach it, then enter covertly, where all those thugs were filming passengers for video to identify which traveler is from which nation. Now the private team gets close to the jet as well. The team leader checks inside the aircraft when they do not see anyone there, where there were two dead bodies. There's also Brad's left note, which contained the directions to the factory, which can be located in addition to this. Both were observing those thugs while they were hidden in the factory. From there, they approach from behind and apprehend two thugs and suffocate them by closing their mouth, which they pass away. They proceed to the hidden entrance after that. Outside the chamber, they reach. All of the passengers were detained in that room. There were numerous guards present. Tony becomes very upset on seeing them. He kills each person one at a time after picking up a hammer there for that reason. Brad then frees the passengers from the room after snatching the keys from a thugs. Then he orders everyone to hurry up and get close to the jet because I have requested assistance over the radio. Surely the rescue crew is on the way. Then he orders everyone to take a seat on the bus. Then Tony approaches him and informs him that there are numerous thugs waiting outside. As a result, we are unable to go. He adds that I will divert the passenger's attention when he notices that they are anxious. Tony, you take all of the passengers from here while I wait. Brad exits the area and approaches the thugs after saying this. He informs their leader that my crew would be arriving soon. You leave my passengers because of this. The thugs now approach and begin to strike him. And they ask themselves, how can I leave it this way? I never abandon someone without money. Then as soon as he is going to shoot Brad to death, the secret team then arrives and begins to attack them. The military fires a lot of shots, whereby numerous thugs are slain. Then they begin to take Brad and depart from this location. They board the bus and set off. The goons leader and the other goons each notice this. Additionally, my brother was murdered. So he becomes quite irate. He tells his crew to move quickly because of this. Be prepared. Also, don't abandon anyone. Kill each person separately. Brad then starts conversing with that secret group in the car. Then their leader informs him that our team is a tiny private one who have just arrived here to save you. We're not a rescue crew, after all. They still have time to arrive. Brad states that no problem as soon as he starts to feel anxious. I have a thought. These people then approach the plane as well. Tony transports all of the passengers there. Brad then informs his followers that a private squad has arrived to assist us. We shall now pilot the aircraft with their assistance and will depart from this location right away. So. Everyone should swiftly take a seat on the aircraft. We have to hurry before the rescue crew arrives. They still have time to arrive. Additionally, if we stay here, that hostile army will murder us. All of the passengers board the aircraft after hearing this. Brad and the head of the private team begin repairing the plane at the same time, where the thugs strike them from. The private team begins halting them after determining who. And from both sides, a lot of shots are being fired here. However, this team had many of strong weapons. They therefore execute numerous thugs. Brad informs the team's captain that I will start the plane in the next five minutes, indicating that I'll leave. Then we'll all go to the air. He then extends his gratitude to Tony for all of his assistance. Brad then enters the area between the shots and takes a seat and begins piloting the aircraft with his partner. Tony's gunfire was silenced. And then he examines the private team's suitcase. There's a bag of cash for him to find. He does, however, leave the cash behind 
and takes the gun from the other bag before engaging the thugs in combat. Brad has also turned the entire plane up until that point. Then, the private team begins scaling the aircraft as well. The owner of the plane company informs Brad, I will tell you a safe place. A place you can go. Tony does not board the aircraft, however, the other passengers all do. He begins to flee while carrying a bag of cash. The private army strikes his plane when he sees him leaving. They have the idea to bring a rocket launcher, flying the aircraft in a single motion in front of it. Though Tony had noticed him, he is dropped when he is shot. He halts this action. When Brad notices this, he is ecstatic. He then succeeds in piloting the aircraft with all of his strength. Tony was pleased as a result, and he moves on from there. Brad departs the island in the aircraft. While describing the airport to which these folks could travel, the plane's owner informs him. That was extremely near. Brad then starts steering the aircraft in that direction. However, the plane begins to crash once more. So Brad had to make an emergency landing once more. And as soon as their plane touches down, the path into the bush starts to advance. The lives of everyone were kept. She was overjoyed for this reason. The proprietor of the aviation firm and his staff were likewise very content in that location. Brad and his partner also sigh in tranquility, at least that they had left the island. Additionally, everyone's life was saved. Her rescue crew occasionally comes here as well. All of the passengers cheered when they saw this. They were applauding Brad's boldness as well. Brad then dispatches the rescue crew with all of the passengers. He then had a conversation with his daughter. She was overjoyed about this. Thank God my dad is still with us. Both daughters were quite eager to converse. Additionally, this is where Brad's bravery's tale comes to a conclusion.